To these who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I grant the concentration of understanding by which they come unto me. If I were to say it in reality, then the Lord is showering down. The Lord is showering down the Redha Vidya Rajaguya Yog, the Yoga of the Royal Knowledge and the Royal Secret, that he began in the ninth chapter. The Lord is saying such things that he, in reality, does not need to say, and yet he is saying them. When a person is charged with a lot of love and is speaking, then he does not even realize what he is saying. He just keeps speaking and speaking. And often the subject that is in his heart, as in his soul, just comes out. Here, this is exactly what has happened to Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna says that those devotees who are constantly devoted and joined with him, who reside in him with one-pointed mind and who worship him with love and are devoted to him, he grants the yogam, the concentration of understanding, by which they come unto him. Such a devotee is internally joined with the Lord. In reality, only he has intelligence who is, internally, who is eternally joined with the Lord. If a person is joined to the Lord in bait, then such a person does not have intelligence. One should worship the Lord with love. Why do these people perform devotion? They do it out of love. They love the Lord and that is why they perform devotion. They perform devotion without reason. They do, they do not have any expectations for any material pleasures. Not only do they have not... Do they not have any material pleasures, but they do not have any expectations for what we call the world above. Nor do such devotees want any bunya, the opposite of sins, any swag, heaven, or moksh, liberation. Such devotees do not want anything. In the 11th ca canto of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, it is said that Na Paramesham Namahendra Dishnam Nasarva Bhauman Narasari Padyam Na Yoga Siddhi Rapunar Bhavam Bhavamva May they, they do not wish for Brahmaji's world. They do not wish for Indra's world either. They do not want to rule the earth. They do not, just, they do not wish to rule the other worlds. They do not want the great spiritual powers of yoga. They do not want, they do not want liberation. Those who have, who have themselves surrendered themselves at the feet of the Supreme Soul do not wish for anything else other than the Supreme Soul. A Maya is one who have themselves surrendered themselves at the feet of the Supreme Soul. It is their own decision. They have decided themselves that they wish to surrender themselves at the feet of the Supreme Soul. Those who do this do not wish for anything else other than the Supreme Soul. The first in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavad gives a list of, the, of what anything else includes. Such devotees do not wish for any, any of this because their devotion is because of love. They worship the Lord with love. And true love is that where there are no expectations. Why does a person perform devotion? There is no reason for it. When I was studying at college, I saw a play in Bengali called Sunor Janmaji. If I'm not forgetting, it was a play by Bilal Sarka. The play was set in olden times. In, ben in Bengal, there are theatre companies. They go from one town to another and have theatre performances. There was such a group. The, the play that was going on in the theatre was about these theatre companies. The owner of the theatre company was very wealthy. The daughter of the owner of the theatre company played part of the lead actress in these plays. A boy who pulled the curtains during the play theatre play fell in love with the daughter of the owner of the theatre company. Nobody wanted this, this, nobody wanted this love relationship to take place. The boy fell in love with this girl. The girl knew that he had a soft corner for her, but the girl was very understanding. She knew that her father would never let this marriage take place. This was Bengal hundred years ago, where there was lots of orthodoxy. The girl told the boy that there was a lot of difference between them and that her father would never let this marriage happen. She thought that this poor boy would will suffer more and more as feelings were growing and growing towards her. The event and vision was such that they were both alone on stage. The director had done it very nicely by putting the girl high on the platform and the boy was down below. That showed the difference between the two with a step there. The girl asked the boy, why do you love me? The girl then straight up boy for five seconds and then ten seconds. The boy then asked the question in return that, what do I breathe? Think about this conversation. The girl asks the boy and the boy does not answer. In fact, the boy returns question with a question in return. What do I breathe? The boy loved the girl just as naturally as he breathed. And there are reasons, are there any reasons to be in love? For example, you are beautiful, your hair is like this, your eyes are like this. You are fair-skinned, your father has a lot of wealth, etc. 
Are these, are these the reasons why one loves another, one, another person? Why do I breathe? Just as much as one breathes, one knows that if he stops breathing, then he will not be able to live. With that much naturalness, one can say that if I do not love you, then I will not be able to live. With this much devotion, this much feelings, and without reason, one enters into a relationship with the Supreme Soul. If the Lord comes to us and tells us, Daughter, tell me why you perform devotion, then what will we say? There's no reason for it. That is why we can say that such a devotee worships the Lord with love. The devotee is a love, and that is why the devotee performs devotion. If the devotee did not perform devotion, then what could the devotee do? This is the question, and this is why the devotee performs devotion. If I were to go further, then I would say that one has understood the failures of all our causes, and has, un and has understood that this is the one successful activity, and that this is where one worships the Lord with love. Until now, one was doing everything with the thought of, what, w what will I get? What will I get? What will I get? This is all one looked at before. Devotion is the only activity where if one performs it with the expectation that they will get nothing, when that, um, if they will get nothing, um, then what they get in return is eternal. That is why one worships the Lord with love. Whenever one ties a relationship with another human being, then they think about what they will get out of it. If this is the reason, then there will not be any fun in this relationship. Once you start the relationship with the attitude that you do not want anything at all, and you start the relationship without any reason, then the bliss you, you will get out of it gives the relationship so much richness. You do not accept anything, and you do not expect anything. You do not want anything. When you have this attitude as you do not want anything at all, then there will be bliss in a relationship. But as soon as expectations come in this relationship, then corrosion and hearsay will start to enter into the relationship. This is what happens when expectations begin to come. If we get bliss from when we form a relationship with another human being, without reason, then what will happen when we form this relationship with the Supreme Soul without reason? And it's only that, that the person on the other side understands that this person loves them without any reason. Do we ever feel that there is pure love without reason in our hearts, and the person on the other side has the power, then if they have this power, they will just sit there quietly? No, they won't. When there is love without reason, then the Lord never keeps the person bound. The Lord gives so much. One should worship the Lord with love. The bliss of worshipping the Lord with love is another thing altogether. To these who are constantly devoted and worship the Lord with love, the Lord grants with the yogam, the concentration of understanding, by which they come to the Lord. Vidhi Yogam means Samyak Version, an equal vision. Samyak Version means the right knowledge of truth. Buddhihi Samyak Darshanam Matatva Vishayam. This Buddhi Yogam and Samyak Darshan is about Supreme Soul. But Tattva Vishayam. It is the vision of the right knowledge of the truth of the Supreme Soul. The Lord says in this, in this verse that He gives this to those who are constantly, constantly devoted and who worship the Lord with love. Buddhi means vision of the right knowledge of the truth about Supreme Soul, and Yogam comes from the word Buj, to join. When one becomes joined with the vision of the right knowledge of the truth about Supreme Soul, then this is Buddhi Yogam, concentration of understanding. The Lord gives devotee union with such knowledge. The Lord gives devotee such Buddhi Yogam, from which the devotee can attain the Lord. Raman Ninja Chariji says that Buddhi Yogam is a devotional attitude of mature state. Buddhi Yogam Vibhak Dashat Panam. And this is what the Lord gives. The Lord gives them attitude of devotion as a way of looking at life. The Lord gives it to the, to the devotee, and what happens is that Mam Upayanti, the devotee, attains to the Lord. Mam Upayanti means the devotee comes near to the Lord. Upa Samiti Yanti Iti Upayanti. Upa means near, and Yanti means to come. Therefore, Mam Upiyanti means, come near to me, the Lord. What does this mean? The majority of us have buddhi, an intellect, but God is not talking about just the intellect. God is talking about buddhi yob, the concentration of the intellect. This is the first thing. Not only that, but God gives the condition that devotee comes near to him. We cannot deny that we have this have the intellect, but we cannot say that all our intellects are for yog, union with the Supreme Soul. In fact, most of our intellects are for pog, material enjoyment. Therefore, most of us do not have buddhi yog. Most of us have buddhi pog. The intellect of the majority of us keep thinking over and over again about what it will get. The more intelligent that a person gets, the more this person can be seen making efforts to gather material goods. 
This does not mean that I am trying to say that material goods are wrong. They are utilities. If a duck thinks that he is only intelligent after he takes a thousand rupees for one visit, then this is wrong. In this case, it is Woody Borg. Sri Krishna here is talking about Woody Yog, the concentration of intellect of the intellect. What is the consequence of, of Woody Yog? It is Mam Upayanti, meaning that the devotee comes near to the Lord and comes to the Lord. Sit quietly and think about this. It is your intellect, Buddhi Yog, or Buddhi Borg. Is your inter intellect either the concentration of the intellect or the concentration of material enjoyment? How can you know about the, co the consequence of this? You should ask yourself whether you are using your intellect to come near to the Supreme Soul or to go away from the Supreme Soul. Sri Krishna says that if the intellect that is brought near to him, then this is Buddhi Yog, um, but it, not only that, but God says that the word Dabani, I grant, showing that God grants us Buddhi Yog. Look at the beauty of this verse. This Buddhi Yog, from which the one goes to the Supreme Soul, is given by the Supreme Soul himself. Therefore, what do you have to do is to what what do you have to do to attain this Buddhi Yog? What are the qualifications that are needed? They are Satata Yuktanam. One must be constantly devoted to and joined to the Lord, to the Supreme Soul. If the, if the devotee remains constantly joined to the Lord, then the Lord, out of compassion for the devotee, gives the devotee the ability to come nearer to the Supreme Soul by opening more and more doors for the devotee, so that the devotee attains proximity with the Lord. This is what Buddha Yog, the concentration of the intellect, is, and from this one wishes to remain to remain in close proximity with the Supreme Soul. End of verse.